Hi guys, what's going on here? Hey. Hello. Well, this is a double portrait and uh, we're working in modeling wax. Uh, we're making a kind of bird with a Janus portrait. So it's, it's a kind of chimerical image of uh, various different elements. This bird is perched on a wooden stand. She has a lion's paw and she's fighting a cobra. But also she's got a human hand and parts of the are kind of morphing into this uh, eagle-like body at the back. And the w way that we work is that we've created these two angles so that we could both use each other as the model so that it, it becomes a kind of um, mixture of observational and uh, fantastical work. Okay. Yeah, with our both imagination, like dialoguing together and having new ideas responding to each other. Creating contrasts on the surface without actually, well, with modeling, but then enhancing the modeling with, uh, with the contrast of different colors. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we started with plaster to give like a bit of volume, you know, and uh, substance. Um, and then we, added, we continue to model with, uh, with clay. And we were starting with a bit of wire and uh, literally shaping it. So having, having a general shape like this, that you might have an idea that say you want a snake going around in a spiral in a whiplash form and then maybe you know a figure going across a stick and so we're starting off by just bending a piece of wire then wrapping it around with bandages and uh, paper a bit of plaster from the bucket you know and, and suddenly this thing takes shape and, and as we went on we added the legs the arm the uh, snake the, the sort of wings here with the feathers uh, all just little bits of wire stuck in, uh, tourniqueting around it to hold it together, gluing it together, you know, covering everything with PVA glue. But basically, uh, it was growing naturally from little pieces and, and, and put together from modeling, from observation, along with sort of the mind's eye, the imagination of it. The exciting thing was to go uh, from the two dimensional aspect into the three dimensional. So uh, walking from this inspiration uh, painting into the sculpture, as if like you know one of the characters is going out of it, and we are building it, we are creating it. You know that was uh, something very special that we felt when we created it. So, how do you catch a character with the paint on a sculpture? You sort of have to look for a few high points on the sculpture and make those accents. A bit like in a painting, I sort of bring those accents out depending on the way the light falls. Modeling in wax and uh, modeling paste, uh, looking at the volume as we work from each other. So we're sort of tilting our heads around as we look as e at each other. And then where the light hits uh, the high points is sort of how to make those accents at the last stage, you know, just to bring forward some of the areas that. Uh, we want to accentuate. So, for example, just a little bit of eyelid there, um, just to bring that out against the dark background. Uh, just to catch the character, really. Uh, I mean, Aurelie's got a very uh, leoline face with these sort of uh, high cheekbones, um, big round eyes. So, you know, we've kind of put those uh, gold and silver in to, to make these even higher points. So uh, definitely, it's been um, a try as well to catch these features and you know to create the volume around uh, and to you know like put the hair as well. But the hair was uh, was a bit tricky, but I tried to really put the forefront uh, a bit higher because at the beginning it was a bit too low. So we reworked on it many many times trying to make it uh, right. But it definitely doesn't look like him. But he just tried to catch his um, like an older version. <laughs> but catching his attitude up a bit while we were. We had a long discussion about together. the skull. So we were talking about the construction underneath the face. So it's looking at the cheekbones, the forehead, the jawbone, how all those things fit together, and the muscles that layer onto there, and then how the skin already is the last stage and, and sort of so there's some of the shapes that you're looking at in the head mm. will be more exaggerated as you're modeling and then you're sort of smoothing them out but it's mm. sort of constructing the thing from inside out from under the skin onto the surface what's going on here so this is a face to face 
drawing exercise for this sculpture, we're going to be doing quick portraits and we're going to be looking at how to work from the model into the molding of the 3D shape. So, yeah. we're going to try and... And you're doing the same, really? Exactly, we're doing like a reverse portrait of each other. Backdrop we did for replace the Persians at Teatro Technique together. So it was black and white originally for the place. And then uh, we added the colors and we want to add even more colors now. It, it was last year, but we are we want to build up and we want to improve it all the time. Yeah, so, so originally it was Teatro Technique that invited us to create a backdrop for a Greek play by Eskilos called The Persians. And the Persians is a story of a war between the great Persian Empire that comes to uh, the sort of um, Greek shores, uh, brings an enormous fleet and then sinks its fleet. And so um, Darius and Xerxes are both defeated in these different wars. So in, in this particular play, it's Xerxes who comes with an enormous army over land and by sea. So this army incorporates um, Persians, Scythians, um, also it incorporates Egyptians. So you've got these kind of groups of figures that we were drawing at the British Museum that overlap each other. And um, it's, it's a sort of chariot of different characters. So here, for example, we've got this Egyptian pharaoh who's also in the Persian army. So it's really a mixture of different antique styles between Greek, Egyptian and Persian art. Um, we, we started one year ago to, do, to work on it, so it's been great to uh, observe the evolution of it and also to come back to it after a while because we have a new vision now on it and we can bring that to the canvas and we can add our new interpretation and improve it. So sometimes we, it's nice to rework on stuff. You know. yeah. kind of thick cotton that will take a lot of damage yeah. <laughs> um, and, it, and it means that we can kind of go from layers of black oil paint that we started with to, to then sort of uh, filling everything in. Exactly. So it's very easy to sort of use this uh, colour to make something look more like a statue or you know with, with a verdigree and, and make it appear to be a 3D object. So leaving yeah. white highlights bright but just sort of glazing in between to give the more go from the flat line and the outline to a more 3d material look <laughs> it's 
pretty good to hang up and see the whole thing and pan across it. filming a couple of the crickets on it. <laughs> yeah. So we've got this giant L for Lachidamon, this giant hoplite who's appearing in the scene. It's probably uh, uh, one of the great Greek warriors. It might be Aeschylus himself who's coming at it from the experience of being in battle. So he's dressed in the traditional hoplite armour, he's got a kind of kilt, uh, he's got horse hair flowing from his uh, helmet and uh, He's in the middle of a sea storm, so behind him is a Greek goddess, probably Athena, the city-state, and one of the Persian gods here, who's just observing all these flying machines. So, sort of stuff from Star Wars, stealth bombers, and lots and lots of aircraft coming into the Gulf, if you like. Uh, these sea storms, they're becoming uh, personifications. So what we actually did here was we got a shadow of me here and kind a of falling and we traced the shadow like this. You see this? So we traced the shadow line into the into the picture and then created a kind of roaring one of the four winds, it might be Zephyros or Argustes, you know, the, the winds that are actually blowing over the fleet. So the triremes are just sinking in the water, all in chaotic deformation because this, the, the elements in the cove where the Persian fleet is lured in at Salamis is just uh, devoured by the waves. You've got the gulls flying over, ready to sort of take their pickings. And uh, it's just, uh, oh, that nail's not. Yeah, um, then we've got Xerxes' name inscribed in the walls of Babylon. It might be on the side of a ship. And the gates of Babylon with these huge yellow lions and uh, yellow bulls, the winged bulls coming out from the center. So um, chariots going in different directions. Uh, here we've probably got Aurelie <laughs> flying around like a kind of Cleopatra figure with the Egyptian chariot. She's plucking the bow because she's just fired an arrow. Um, we've got the mother of Xerxes and Xerxes coming back very confused because he's come back losing the army. So actually in this picture there's different places going on. There's both the battles in Greece and then this is back home in Babylon in the sort of center of the world where all the different nations would gather bringing in gold and presents and gifts to sort of shower the Babylonians with all of their wealth and so they gather this army from Greece, from Turkey, from the Levant, from Egypt and they, and they all come together into a, a big gated house here and, and they sort of have this war procession um, showing the might of the Persian Empire and then these giant pythons and snakes they sort of unify everything because they weave in amongst the characters and you've got silly things like sort of flying turkeys and uh, pigeons and uh, fallen warriors. So who are fighting in the army? Well, there's these Amazon women who are actually uh, from, gathered from the sort of cannibalistic hordes that run around horse riding. And you know, Amazon meaning the woman without a breast because she cuts off one of her breasts to allow for the bow, to, for easier firing of the bow. Um, and then you've got the Spart Spartans coming up against them. So here they sort of half naked with their big shields fighting against this cannibalistic wild uh, thing. And then we've got um, Aurelie's profile here as kind of different yeah. sphinxes. So again, three or four overlapping lines. 
Uh, so if, exactly. If, so if what you happened look that was way, yeah. yeah. So what happened now? Like we there was a shadow arriving on us, and then you know, like our face projected on the fabric. Even the hand and there. Then yeah. We paint. That's the way we drew our face here. You know, like it was really interesting process too. So um, that just happened like that without thinking. It just you know happened. So. And you've yeah. got this kind of idea of, the, of riding a horse that then turns into a very fast aircraft. Yeah, exactly. And then I wanted to draw a snake and I just tried. And, and there was this woman snake with all the texture of the snake arriving, you know. So it's, all, it's like a full uh, human animal um, painting, like our sculpture, basically. So we've got this kind of uh, police truncheon that she's holding up and she's wearing a police a uh, band on her head, which is very much like the uh, sort of Metropolitan Police <laughs> with the checkered uh, symbols there. Exactly. This is a... I mean, we, there are a lot of symbolic, a lot of symbolic in this painting. We added some writing. You remember the name of the writing, like from a stone or like uh, that yeah, we added? Yeah, the, the stone carving. Um, so yeah, we've got it, Arabic inscriptions. Exactly. We've got, it was a uh, long way from the past, there. like ancestral. Uh, we've got some English declaration of peace on the on the aircraft carrier. Uh, you've got these snake women that loom out of the water like Glaucus and sort of sign the peace declaration because they finish the they obliterate the fleet so they. They, they no longer can fight. Um, motorcycle helmets, uh, spears. So um, these chariots that we have here with all the overlapping heads, they come from the walls of Persepolis that are in the British Museum. And uh, they look in all directions, you know, with just a simple kind of collage of several figures looking in different directions. They embody this all-powerful uh, super weapon that was invented at the time because it's Babylon that invented the chariot and it was the fastest way to get archers across the battlefield and into the effective place. So strategically this was the kind of machine gun of its age. Okay yeah so we could we could make some shadows and highlights on the snake. Give them a bit more of a uh, 3D volume. Highlight like the scale, like going up here. 